For 2021, KTM have done a massive update to the Super Adventure. It's got different frame geometry, different weight distribution, a host of new electronic features, including active cruise control, anti-dive, front end. It has really been taken apart and put back together. Doesn't look that different, but there's been some very, very drastic changes to this machine. I've had this on loan for the last week. Join me for a ride. I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you if it's any good. There's been a lot of hype about this bike. Is it worth the hype? Join me and I'll let you know. Chop C, roll the intro. Power her on and let's rock. So I've heard a lot of great things about this bike. I've looked at all the everyone else's videos of this machine. So when I picked this up, it had some pretty big boots to fill. My expectations of this bike were pretty damn high, if I'm honest. I thought this is either going to be absolutely fantastic or it's going to be completely overhyped and I'm not going to get it. So what is new for 2021 on this bike? Well, more or less everything. It looks very, very similar, this bike, to the old one, but everything has been refined, everything has been tweaked. The old bike felt a little bit vibey, a little bit agricultural with that big engine in it, but this one, they seem to have, they seem to have worked wonders with how smooth the engine feels. The new Super Duke was the same. This is obviously a derivative of the Super Duke engine, They've, they've changed the power output. This is 160 horsepower, not 180 horsepower. And it's 138 newton meters of torque. So it's a very similar torque figure to the Super Duke, but it's just how refined this engine is now. It is so smooth and so usable. Even below 2000 revs, normally big V twin 2000 revs, it will still pull without making too much of a fuss down at 2,000 revs. The game changer on this bike, and one of the things whereby the GS was so good, was the GS had the telelever suspension. So when you went on the front brake, it didn't dive. You know, it reduced the dive of the forks. This has got an electronic version of that called anti-dive. So as you brake, it actually stiffens up the forks to minimize dive. And it really, really works. So if you're pushing on through the corners where normally, you would be sort of coasting on the rear brake so you didn't upset the suspension too much. You could brake at the front like you would a sports bike and it really doesn't dive much at all. It dives a bit of course but it really minimises that dive and that's another thing which comes as part of the electronics pack. So you absolutely must have the anti-dive because if you're getting sporty, if you're pushing on, it makes a world of difference to how the bike feels. Let's have a little play on the twisty stuff. <laughs> it is fast. It is a blooming fast, this thing. It's actually, it's one of those bikes where you look down and think, Christ, I'm never going that speed, am I? It really picks up speed at an incredible pace. You can cross country on this so fast. From A to B across the back roads, I think it's, it's a hell of a weapon. It's a hell of a weapon. It's more, much more sporty than the GS. Much more sporty than the GS, this thing. It handles like a GS. It's got that flickability of the GS, but it's got immense amounts of power. Way more powerful than the GS. It's also got that stability of the GS where it didn't have the anti-dive, where you've got that on this now. It's, um, this, as a bike to ride, as looks aside, I think it is a GS Beta. It's so sporty, that actually, its tyres start to let it down a little bit. It's got quite a high, it's got the Maxxis tyres on it, and they're really not soft and not sporty enough. It's got such sporty characteristics, this thing, that it needs stickier rubber. It's that good. I'd love to put 
a 17 inch front wheel on it and make some sort of mega moto out of it <laughs> not a super moto but a mega moto you could push really hard around the corners if those tires were a little bit more sticky it's so good it's so sporty when that suspension all firms up has it firmed up yet as it as it caught on with my sporty riding i think it has now it's it's gone semi firm it's got a bit of a semi on and so have i comfort has also been improved this seat is a lot more comfortable than the old bike it's also adjustable between a low and a high seat height you can also adjust the foot peg positions as well there's two different settings for the foot pegs at the moment the foot pegs seem quite high that that I'd, I'd like to take them down a little bit or move the seat up a little bit it's not absolutely perfect for my size I'm six foot two but you can play around with it you can adjust it that's the beauty of it the seat is really comfortable you can sit in this seat for hours and hours without any body pain the new TFT is also adjustable it will move around in three positions to get it pointing at you perfectly if you're a different height so that's nice there's nothing worse than being on the bike of a TFT where you're looking at it not quite at the right angle you can address that on this now the screen is adjustable as it was before on the twiddlies you can do it in one hand you can do it on the fly no problem there there's cubby holes here we'll cover all the little bits like that in the walk around one thing with this bike it costs 14999 so that's 15 grand basically for the stock version all of these electronic goodies like the anti-dive they're all extra in typical KGM fashion they're unlocked with a code so basically for all of the pack if you want everything on it quick shifter anti-dive the advanced suspension the rally mode it's about a thousand pound so with all of the technology extras enabled on this bike you're talking 16 grand and this bike is loaded with that tech so really you do want that i would suggest it's one of the best things about this bike all that tech and so really you could call this bike 16 grand by the time you've turned on all those things you really want what i might do actually i'm going to go in and actually select sporty suspension to see if i can tell any different suspension sport there we go it's such a transformation when you go into that sport mode compared to the the comfort you know it, it just it's just bouncing over the road a bit more now the whole that suspension is incredible how much it's actually firmed itself up it is impressive this electronic suspension is very impressive i think it's the most impressive electronic suspension i've tried anti-dive keeps things in check down on the blipper second gear bang it in on the power a little bit of a weenie coming out and then you you're into the next corner already laying it over on the power again it is a proper weapon 17 inch wheel super coarser tires <laughs> where's the nearest track that anti-dive when you go hard on the brakes is just so so nice it's, it's a bit of a game changer that really makes such a difference to the bike whereas normally you'll be setting it up on the rear brake to save up setting the suspension too much you're on the front like you would be on a sports bike like you would be on a supermoto maybe you know it's uh and with the sporty suspension set in that mode as well oh, it's it's so good there's not a quicker way across country and the quick shifter and the blipper just adds to that sporty feel as well as you might tell it's a bit of a weapon this thing so there she is the 2021 super adventure s it's not going to win any awards in the beauty department let's be honest it's got a very tall front end a very long face you know it's almost a little bit horse-like and now it has these additional lower ball bag fuel tanks it actually i think makes it look perhaps a little bit better 
than the old version because the old version looked very top heavy and now at least it looks a bit more better distributed the size of it with it's a little bit wider and it's not just all tall it's now got a bit of width as well so it's not the prettiest bike in the world but let's have a look at some of the details this bike is now euro 5 of course so we've got a different exhaust on this uh, again it's a big old can doesn't look particularly good if you want something looking a little bit better they do a, a factory fit a Kropovich but uh, the standard one is not the best looking exhaust in the world but when are they ever so these are the additional fuel tanks either side you've got these additional pods out of the bike now these make a massive difference to how the bike how agile the bike feels it really does feel like a GS from the way you can flick it around because the weight is carried lower because of these fuel tanks so you know that it, but it gives it a bit of a, a fat look but functionality again makes a world of difference to the way the bike actually handles the bike is still keyless as it was before even the fuel cap but now the key doesn't even have a blade to access under the seat you have to push this button and that releases the rear seat let's have a look what we got under here toolkit that's about it really you can fit your toolkit in there and maybe a mini mcdonald's meal happy meal maybe switch gear is the same as the new super duke so it's, it's the same layout as the new super duke it's yeah it's all right it doesn't feel like the best quality switch gear i've ever seen quite nice and easy to find these buttons here the cruise control and then the indicators again they're a little bit fiddly to actually turn them off yeah it's okay we've also got a little cubby hole here to key to keep the key in or your phone and there's actually usb port in there for charging your phone as well there's another usb up here which i've got my ultimate add-ons 12 volt plugged in running in my phone so you've got all that good stuff here is the new 7 inch tft i'm going to very quickly go through some of the options of the menu i could do a whole video just talking about the menus on this but let's go into it a little bit and we'll give a very quick rundown so first of all you have the bike information it's not a kawasaki it's just showing us that everything is green that's why everything's green on there you've not just bought a kawasaki don't worry going into the motorcycle you've got the rider mode so you've got the different rider modes off-road mode which adjusts power and throttle response so i think it reduces the power to only 100 horsepower i think that's more than the africa twin has in full power mode you've got rally rally is quite good rally enables you to have adjustable slip a bit like the um the track mode on the uh, super duke so you can go in and adjust how much slip you want there's a couple little buttons on the switch gear i'll show you in a minute so rally mode is quite good if you want to perhaps do a few little wheelies and keep the traction low and what's great about it is you can also adjust you can have the rally mode and then have whatever throttle response you want so you can have the rally mode but with the sport throttle response traction control on or off basically abs off-road mode yeah in rally mode you can't have the adaptive cruise control there's a couple of little uh, caveats um so let's leave it in rally for now this is the adjustable suspension the sport mode street mode comfort mode off-road mode advanced mode let's go into the advanced mode let's select the advanced mode where you can then go in and actually uh, you can adjust things like preload i have a high preload on the rear because i'm a fatty the anti-dive on or off the fork you can then adjust how much how soft you want the forks to be manually and the same with the shock it is incredible this really is incredible to be honest auto is also really good leave it in auto when you're on the motorway it will just cruise along in comfort but as soon as you start to push on the bike reads how you're riding so when you start to throw it around it uses the IMU data to see what lean angle you've got how you're using the throttle and it will stiffen everything up um, so we'll leave it in auto for now because that has actually been quite good so all the stuff around suspension there heated grips on or off pretty self-explanatory ktm my ride is the phone integration um, and then there's some custom settings you've got a, uh, a a switch on the switch gear where you can select what you want it to be like a favorites a quick access button i've got that set to heated grips and to change the throttle response your favorites at the bottom what you want showing on the bottom of the screen you know whether you want oil temperature the clock 
whatever. Illuminated buttons, how bright you want them to be, whether you want the DRLs on or off. Bluetooth integration, the quick shifter, if you want it up and down or whatever. Hill hold control, whether you want that on or off, that's off at the moment. Let's turn it on. Shift lights, you know, cornering light test. Is it, this bike, it's incredible, the menus on this bike. I'm not going into any more detail than that, but there's a lot to it. I think you agree. I'm in the rally mode. So in the rally mode, you get this sort of uh, regular analog sort of style ref counter. You also get, it shows you what you've got selected. So sport mode, throttle response, auto, suspension, uh, high preload on the back, and I'm in off-road ABS mode. Don't really want that. We'll go back to road mode. These are the favourites I selected. So I want my oil temperature, the clock, the outside air temperature and my miles per gallon. So you can choose what you want displayed. That's my range till empty. That is my uh, anti-slip. So on these buttons here, you've got one button here, one button on the other side of the grip. And as I play with those, it adjusts my traction control. So you can select one being the least amount of traction control, nine being the most amount of traction control. So you can play with how much you want. So if you're off-road, you can have a little bit of fun with the rear spinning up, etc. Keyless fuel cap. Oh, I do love these. Yeah, that opens on this one. That's always a bonus. That is it, really. I don't know what else to say. That is the Super Adventure and all of its features and noteworthy elements. <laughs> Let's jump back on. I think there's never been a bike to live up to its name <laughs> as well as this. A super adventure. A super adventure bike. It's fair comment. I can't argue with that. If you got the old one, is it worth upgrading? I think it is. I think there's enough here. It's not a minor update. There's enough here to warrant upgrading your old Super Adventure to this. Really, and I'm not just saying that. I really think this is like a whole different bike from the way it rides and all those bits of extra tech features. Like I say the anti-dive for me is a uh, game changer really really good i'm looking forward to trying the new multistrada to see how that compares to this but i think it's got a hell of a job to do to uh, be better than this cruise control on the motorway let's set it i want to set my speed to 70 miles an hour it's detected that car in front because we've got a green car on the symbol so it's basically going to maintain the distance behind this car who's only doing about 65. If I want to overtake, you indicate, and then the bike will accelerate up to your predefined speed. So 70 miles an hour in this circumstance. Want to go a bit far? Oh, it's the horn. Want to go a bit faster? Let's do 76. Now, if I pull in behind this car in front, it's still detecting that echo. I've lost the, lost sight of that man in front now, so it's letting me just travel normally. If I go left. I'm pulling behind this Fiat, it's detected him, it's going to slow me down to his speed. If I don't want that, I want to overtake, indicate, it will accelerate. Back up to my 76 miles an hour. Very good. So, I know what you're going to say, is it a GS beta? I think as a bike to ride, yes, it rides a bit nicer than the GS. It's as smooth as the GS. It changes direction as quickly as the GS. It's faster, way more powerful than the GS. Even the new shift cam GS, it's way more. It's 160 horsepower for heaven's sake. What's the GS? About 120. It's way more powerful than the GS. The electronic suspension is better than the GS. More of a varied range of travel. The only thing I think which isn't better than the GS is the looks of the bike. I think the GS looks better. The design of the GS looks better. The headlight looks better on the GS. The GS is also, I think, the fit and finish is slightly better. And of course, you've got the BMW dealer network, dealer support, which again, you know, is very, very good. So, but the actual bike to ride is a GS Beta. Would I buy one? Mm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to go down the adventure bike route. I just don't do the miles. You know, if this was my only form of transport, was a motorcycle, then yes, I would have something like this to do the miles. But all my riding, as I've said before, is just really for fun. 
you know, if I've got to go somewhere on a bike, as long as I've got cruise control, I'll happily do the odd trip on the motorway on the sports bike or, or even the supermoto. I don't do the miles to warrant having this sort of bike. If I could only have one bike and I did do a lot of miles, this would be at the top of my list. I think this or the Super Duke GT because I don't want to go off road. So the GT would probably fit the bill a bit better. I'm hoping the new GT is going to have all this tech on the new GT and that will be incredible. This tech on the Super Duke GT, I'm looking forward to that one. So there we go, I think that's about all I can tell you about the new Super Adventure R. It is a stonking motorcycle, without question. Has it lived up to the hype? I, I think it has. I think it has lived up to the hype, so. And that's saying something, because this bike's had a lot of hype. But thanks for watching, as always. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm actually picking up, this goes back this week, and I'm picking up the new Ducati Supersport. So the brand new Ducati Supersport I will be reviewing within the next couple of weeks or so. If you're waiting to find out the results and the first ride of the 690, don't worry, that'll be coming along very soon. Um, I've, got, I've, just been, I've just let that run a little while so more people could enter the competition to guess the weight of the, the weight shed from that machine. But I will bring that video to you soon and I'll close the competition, close the entries and announce the winners. So there we go, thanks for watching as always, really appreciated, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, oh.